Thank you, sir. Oh, let's dive in. Go to Ephesians chapter number two, and let's get rolling. Now, tomorrow, who knows? It could happen before we leave here because we have plans for these things, but the Spirit of God can always interrupt. Tomorrow, I plan to pray and just help release my faith and the anointing for miracles and healings tomorrow. So if you know someone who's been struggling with that, invite them tomorrow morning, and um, I'm going to let it all hang out. Just let it roll. Just let it go. Just let it all out uh, to tomorrow. Day. I'm just coming up with all these Texas terms, y'all. Um, we're going we're gonna to go for it. Um, of course, some of these revelations are in the new book that will be released next week. And um, I was able to bring some with me. There are a few of them left. So, you know, just looking at that cover ought to make you want to do something. You know, it just ought to make you want to do something just looking at the cover. And... The power of his resurrection is chapter number four, in which I've been sharing some of this, not to the depths that I've been preaching it here, but, but it's, it gives you uh, like different revelations you need in order to truly take back your authority. And, and so we're going to get into something finally I was trying to get there last night, but finally, I think we're going to get there. Then I need you to, we're going to have to have some Selah moments. Which means there are going to have to be some moments where you just like, just, just meditate on that. Think about that. The reason I've been talking about the resurrection and the reason the Spirit of God has brought us through understanding that, some of you hearing that for the very first time, some of you have heard it before and it was awakened in you. And like the woman of God was just saying, it's been there, but some of it's been dormant and we haven't been functioning in it. The reason that the Spirit of God took us through that revelation first is because if you don't function in that one, you won't function in this next dimension. Because the finished work of Jesus does not end at the cross. And I know we sing songs, it's an amazing hymn, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. It's an amazing hymn. It is absolutely true. But you, you don't want to stay near the cross. That's not where you need to stay. Uh, you need to go through the cross and to the dimension that you actually function in right now, and that is the ascension. The finished work of Jesus, those that are watching me, please capture this and share this with everybody you know. The finished work of Jesus did not end at the resurrection. It ended at the ascension when he ascended and sat down at the right hand of the Father. That's the consummation of salvation. So let's read that here, right here in Ephesians chapter number one again and verse Number, boy, there is an anointing in, there's just an anointing up on me. I can, you know, I, I wish everybody could at least preach one message so that y'all understand that we don't be up here just acting silly. <laughs> Things be happening to us up here. things be going on in our spirits, in our souls. We're seeing things. We're hearing things. We're seeing visions and images and revelation. And then our body is 
filling things, surges of the anointing is flowing through actually our bodies. All types of things are going on up here. And man, am I under it today. <laughs> Boy, it says in Ephesians 1, it says that you might understand what is exceeding greatness in verse number 19, the exceeding greatness of his power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. So it didn't just end with the resurrection. It ended with the ascending and the seating at the right hand. Far above all principality. So both of them happened or one of them led to the other. It is the resurrection that gave him this dominion, this position of authority. So when I say ascension dimension, I'm basically talking about your position of authority. That the resurrection corrected your spirit. But then the ascension has corrected your authority. Until you're functioning in both of them, you're not functioning in the fullness of what he sent us to do. And we're not entering into the fullness of what he has entered into. A resurrected spirit given supreme authority. And so he was raised and seated and like I said last night, nobody disputes that. What people and even religious people and even your mind wrestles with is the fact that he raised us up together. Yes. Ephesians 2, 6. Come on, I want you to see that on the screen. It's coming in 5, 4, 3, <laughs> to Ephesians 2 and 6. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Which means everything God did in Christ, he did to us. He raised him up and then, that is actually the, the Greek word egyro. That word raised right there, and he raised us up together. That's, that, even though that says raised us up, I don't want you to think like elevation. Because it's the Greek word, a gyro. It means to awaken or to make alive. It means to be resurrected. It means to be revived. That's what it's saying. And he raised us up together. He, Jesus wasn't the only one resurrected. So were we. We were a gyroed. He gyroed us with him. And made us sit together in heavenly places. Same thing in Ephesians 1 that, he, that Paul said, you've got to get a revelation of what is the exceeding greatness of his power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own hand. You've got to have that revelation because he did the same thing to you. And so we've been talking about being raised up, being resurrected. Now we're going to talk about being seated in heavenly places far above all principality and power. You and I are far above principalities and powers. 
which means the new creation those of us that have been born again, those of us who are in Christ Jesus are the highest ranking spiritual beings on the planet. The only thing, the only beings that outrank those of us in Christ are God and Christ. And even when I say Christ, he almost wants to rebuke me in that because he was like, I don't even outrank you. I gave you my rank. We're joint heirs with Christ. But we have to give him the preeminence because without him, we wouldn't be seated. Which means I'm going to have to preach from a chair. I try not to do it, but I have to, I have to sit down. I have to, I have to sit down. If I don't sit down, you won't see it right. I have to sit. I have to just rearrange some furniture. I want you to think of this. Your spirit, when it was raised from the dead, the Bible says God did this in public in the realm of the spirit. This is why your Bible says he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it, which means God made a public display of this resurrection and this authority given that totally stripped as if you were to take off clothes. He totally stripped and spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly and he did it in hell's kitchen. Which means he went into the underworld to strip Satan of all authority. And your Bible says something happened where there was such a public display of the humiliation of Satan. That everybody down there saw it. That is when he raised us from the dead. Now, not you and I, because me and you came later. But I'm talking about what happened in the underworld. When he raised them from the dead and led captivity captive. And the devil had to watch them all be resurrected and leave. Oh, my God. What kind of God goes into the underworld just to strip Satan of all death and destruction, resurrect everybody down there, and walk up out of there, and ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Which means everything that he had been working on since Adam got wrecked in one moment. Everybody death had a grip on since Adam got destroyed in one moment. That's power. Showing you that there is nothing that the Spirit of God wants to do that demonic power can stop it. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? 
Because he raised us up together. Which means if Satan can't stop the resurrection of your spirit, there is nothing else that comes with it he can stop either. It is the one thing that rendered him powerless is that when God resurrected you, and that would be enough, but then the Bible says, and God not only gave you his spirit, Jesus not only handed you his spirit, but as it, but if one would take his own scepter, take his own rank, and take it off of his chest and pin it on you, he says, not only do you have my spirit, I give you my authority. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. You got Jesus' authority. Say la. Let's just take a moment to just to just think about it. No, you don't have your authority. You have his authority. He raised you up together with him and seated you in heavenly places. Which means in the realm of the spirit, your spiritual rank is alone with God. In the realm of the spirit, you sit with God. Would you look at your neighbor and say, do you know who's to your left? Do you know who's to your left? I said, look at your neighbor and tell them, do you know who is to your left? You sit beside God. Occupy the same position as Jesus in the heavens. Which means you have the same rank in the heavens. There is nothing that outranks you that's in the realm of the spirit except God Almighty. So Satan is not your problem. Or better yet, he shouldn't be. Because you occupy an authority so far above him. That after this day, you will never have a problem with him. You will never have a problem with demonic attacks. You will not. You will not. You will shut them down. But you got to know this. You got to know that you have been given this position and he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. And then it goes on to say, so that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace toward us who are in Christ Jesus. This is what the older saints of God are standing over the seal of heaven and peering into this generation looking for. Your Bible declares that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses. Why? Because all Abraham, 
Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all the way down to David, major prophets, minor prophets, John the Baptist. Now you know why in the Bible, in the Bible, Jesus makes this statement that, that among those born of women, there was not a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is in the kingdom, the least of them is greater than John. Why? Because John didn't have what you got. John was a prophet under the old covenant who was preparing the way of the Lord who was talking about the kingdom coming, but he didn't receive it while he was on the earth. When John died, he went down into the underworld just like everybody else until Jesus showed up down there, resurrected all of them, led captivity captive, and they did not receive it while they were on earth. They didn't get this position until they got to heaven. But God has some better things for us. We don't have to wait to get to heaven to get this position. We get to have it right here, right now, on earth. Which means God could have had you born in any generation. You could have been back there with Moses or Joshua. Lord, y'all got me preaching. You could have been back there with David and Daniel. But Jesus, before the foundation of the world, said, No, I want them around after my resurrection. I saved you so that you don't have to wait to get to heaven to get the authority. I'm going to bring it down to you and you're going to be my people who are going to walk around after the resurrection which means we owe Jesus something we have to press into these dimensions if you were not going to walk in this, you should have been born back there with the Hebrews coming out of the wilderness. You should have been back there in the old covenant. If you're not going to walk in this, you should have been way back there in the minor prophets. But we're not going to be alive after the resurrection and not experience resurrection life. We're not going to be alive after the resurrection and not walk in this authority and snap our fingers and watch demons scatter. We were born for A.D. after death. And all of the saints are peering over the seal of heaven. David is saying, my God, if I could have had what you got. Oh, they're saying, if we couldn't walk around with that. Did you not know in the old covenant, there was a whole generation after generation after generation after generation of the multiplied millions and billions of people who couldn't even access the presence of God. They couldn't even have an encounter. They were dead spiritually. They couldn't even hear from God. God had to anoint a prophet to speak on his behalf. And if it wasn't a prophet, then you couldn't hear from God. But when Jesus said it is finished, the veil was rent in the temple. And now all of us are reborn spirits of God and I don't have to wait on a prophet to tell me anything. I got a prophet with me 24-7. The Holy Ghost is here to reveal to me all of the mysteries of God. And we cannot waste this. 
The reason the Lord really had me write this book is to awaken another generation to the fact that we are letting the devil run our planet. Look at somebody say, not no more, not no more, not no more. Say no more, not no more. There ain't no anointing on more. Not no more. Not no more. Boy. I feel it coming alive in you. I feel it. I feel it coming alive in you. I feel it coming alive. We are seated in a position of authority in the heavenly places. Far above principality. Power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. Your spirit outranks them all. This is why we had to talk about the resurrection because you've got to become spiritual, spiritually conscious, spiritually aware. That I can't judge this based on my natural pedigree. I can't judge this based on my natural temperament or my natural personality. Has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your resurrected spirit. That your resurrected spirit carries a rank of the God class. We always talk about being of mankind. You're of the God kind. Your spirit is walking around right now or sitting in that seat right now with the highest rank given to it that a spirit can occupy. You have been given the authority of God. Satan knows this, but he also knows if you know it. Because of this rank, Satan hates you. His whole contention with you is not over anything religious. It's over this position you have. He hates you for it. Because God gave you what he wanted. And that was to sit in the God class. And be like the most high God. And rule like God. He gave it to his children. And Satan knows we have it. But he has been trying to convince us we don't. Therefore, every attack on your life is a test. <laughs> oh my God! It is a test. Because you have to remember Satan is deranged. <laughs> if he would try to usurp God's authority, you know he's not going to respect yours. He's an outlaw. He knows it's illegal for him to touch you, but it's not going to stop him. He is hell-bent on making sure you don't exercise your authority over him. And so just like he tried to roll up on God, he gonna try to roll up on you. And what you have to do is the same thing God did when he rose up on you. Cast him out. Not putting up with it. 
I have a statement that I've adopted that I might struggle with the Adamic. That means my mind and my flesh, but I will not struggle with the demonic. I ain't having it. If I find out a spirit is behind it, it is over. Because I might have to fast and pray to deal with my flesh. But I don't have to do that to deal with the enemy. All I got to do. Oh, I got so much. Let me slow down. Let me, let me, let me slow down. Let me slow down. Your spirit has been given the highest rank in the spirit world. The new creation, the born again, resurrected spirits are the highest rank. Now, why would God give you a rank in that realm? Because originally your assignment was over spirits. When God shows up in Genesis chapter number one, we see an earth in order, in disorder. Now, Genesis one is not God creating the earth because the earth is there. It's already there. Genesis one is God reordering, restructuring, bringing things back into order that became chaotic. Now, without going into a whole lot of theological details, we know this earth is dark and chaotic because of the, the atmospheric interest in, in, in the, how can I say this, Lord? Because of the influence of Satan in this realm. Some scholars believe that Satan literally had jurisdiction over the earth in the very beginning. This was his realm. This is what God gave him the steward over, and he wasn't satisfied with that. And he says, I don't just want to worship God, and I don't want to work for God. I want to be like God. And he says, and I will ascend into the heavens. And so some scholars believe that he was over this realm. Therefore, the Bible talks about a world that once was. That there was a social order down here before, but the thing got destroyed. It got judged. Something happened to the earth. That's why we have fossils from millions and millions of years ago. But the earth is only when it states Adam coming into being a little over 6,000 years. And so something had to happen back there. Now, I wasn't back there, so I can't tell you for sure what happened. But something tells me that in order for there to be chaos, there had to be a devil. In order for something to come up under extreme judgment and disorder, it has to be dealt with by the adversary. So two things either happen. Either when Satan was cast back down to the earth, that's when he went chaotic and everything was destroyed. Or God sent him back down to the earth and flooded the thing and froze it like an ice cube in judgment. Either way, we know the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face. God didn't create it that way because in him there is light. He has no darkness to get darkness from. So this is the curse that was in the earth through either judgment or demonic activity. However, God comes back on the scene, rearranges the earth back in divine order, and then says, how can I keep it this way? I rule in heaven. I'm not coming down there to rule the earth. What can I do to make sure that this planet is never in again 
with confusion and chaos. What can I do to make sure that Satan never gets a hold of my creation again? And God searched through all of his wisdom. And the answer God came up with was let us make man. Which means the original creation for us was to be Satan's master. what we were originally created that's what adam and eve were created for it wasn't for anything religious god when he came in the garden in the cool of the evening he wasn't coming so they could have church they wouldn't come in to have bible study you understand they were in the image and likeness of god they came for fellowship they came for communion. They came so that they could put their minds together and he could receive all of the wisdom and counsel and knowledge and glory of God. Adam and Eve were so such in a glorified state that the Bible declares they did not even know they had bodies. Think about that. That they were such in a spiritual dimension. It wasn't until after he ate of the tree that the Bible says his eyes came open and he knew he was naked. The translation is that was the first time he became aware that he was natural. That they were such in a spiritual dimension. God breathed into him his spirit and they functioned on a whole nother spiritual level a spiritual dimension over the earth realm and the assignment was have dominion say that after me have dominion over the earth what was that he was saying protect it keep it don't let the enemy have it and if Adam hadn't have sinned Satan would have been stuck in a corner somewhere in jail because God originally created you and I for his punishment. It was his humiliation that God stripped him, sent him down into the earth realm, banished him out of his presence, went to the dust, formed a man, and said, just like you had to obey me, now you're going to have to obey them. You were created to keep him underneath the sentence that God gave him. And we let him out of jail. We gave him access into the earth realm. When Adam sinned, the authority structure was lost. And Satan said, now I can become the God of this thing. And he became the God of this world. What is that telling you? He was a spirit being unleashed to function in authority in this realm. That's what it means. He was released into this realm only for God to come snatch that authority back again and hand it back to the church. And our assignment is put him back in jail. Now, I can't throw him in jail for you. But I can sure lock him up in the Petra household. 
This is why the revelation has to get to all of the believers. Because until we start functioning in our authority, he will be unleashed in the earth to kill, steal, and destroy. But oh God, if all of us know who we are, and if all of us ever get this revelation, we could stand up in crescendo in one day on this planet if billions of us got together and released our authority we could shut hell down but I found a strange thing in this generation you got people running from the devil instead of resisting him not you you have to understand you are the special forces I preach all around the country and in parts of the world, and I'm telling you, this ain't the normal. You've been privileged to know things and to have revelations and mysteries preached to you. But the reason the Spirit of God had me write this book is because we've got to get this to the ends of the world. So that we will rise up and begin to take our place above principalities and powers and mights. Now, let me prove to you Satan knows this. He knows this. He is so afraid of you. I know. I'm sorry they taught you to be afraid of him. But he is frightened of you. He gets nervous when you wake up. He's hoping to sneak around you undetected. Because he knows if you ever gaze your eyes upon him and discern him in any way, he has got to stop doing whatever he is doing. You Occupy a rank so far above that you occupy the authority of Jesus. And let's show you how bad Jesus' authority was. <laughs> the most deranged, the most deranged. I, I didn't even ask y'all if I could walk around down here. Did, okay. I, I don't want to mess up the camera. I don't want people to be watching and be like, where did he go? Where did he go? Your Bible declares, You remember the story of the demoniac of Gadara? It's crazy, right? Deranged. This man was cutting himself. This man was sleeping in the tombs, walking around naked. Spirit of suicide was in him, perversion. To the degree that there were three to six thousand demonic entities in personalities that had access to this man. That's what it means when he said, my name is Legion, for we are many. A Roman Legion was anywhere from two to six thousand. So all of these personalities, this is why he was doing so much crazy stuff. You remember the boy who was throwing himself in the fire and into the water and all of that. What happened to all of those spirits when Jesus stepped on the premises? Your Bible declares that those legion of spirits said, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I'm paraphrasing. Because remember, this man was crazy. He was breaking chains. No one could tame him. But when Jesus got off that boat, all of a sudden he calmed down, didn't he? You want to know why? Because those spirits knew his spirit. 
That's why when the spirits, when Jesus came up on the man, the spirits cried out and said, what have we to do with you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. In other words, the spirits were saying, we ain't got nothing to do with you. We've been running their life, but we know we can't run yours. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They can't control us, but you can. And listen at what the demons said. We know who you are, Jesus. What have we to do with you? Did you come to torment us before the time? In other words, they were saying, what are you doing down here? How did you get in a body? How are you walking the earth? See, it was hidden in a mystery. It was hidden in a mystery. And to make a long story short, they said, okay, okay, we know we got to go, but can we negotiate just how you're going to cast us out? They said, don't cast us out of the region. Can we go into the swine? And Jesus said, I'll permit you that. And with one word... He did not quote the law, the prophets. He did not go into prayer. He didn't go into meditation. He did not go into a fast. He said one word. One. One word. Go. And three to six thousand demons scattered. That's the authority. <laughs> That's the authority. That's the authority you got. Right now. That's the authority. Your Bible declares that Paul in Acts 19, just go back and read it when you have time, when you go home. Acts 19, Paul is working these mighty miracles with handkerchiefs and aprons. Demons are coming out of many people and they're being healed of all kinds of diseases. There are some Jewish priests sitting there, the sons of Sceva, watching this. Oh, you know where I'm going. <laughs> And they're watching this saying, how's he doing that? And, and, oh, we got it. We got it. We got it. He is saying, in the name of Jesus, come out. They say, are you taking notes? Write that down. Write that down. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And so they said, we can do this. We got the formula. We're going to go up to this demon-possessed man, and we're going to use this formula. In the name of Jesus. This is in Acts 19. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> they come up on the demon-possessed man, and they say, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Come out. And what did the demon spirit say? Come on. Come on, church. Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know, but who? Which means they're saying, we can't even find you in the spirit. What they were saying is you have no right. You have no rank. Why? Because you ain't been resurrected. 
which means they know us. Touch somebody and say, they know us. They know us. Do you know what you look like to demon spirits? They know you. They can see you. And they're screaming right now because I'm telling you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I just shout and let the devil know we're coming. Oh, let principalities and powers know we're coming to take back our authority. You are not just remain standing. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done for this session. We'll go deeper in the morning. You are not some sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner born spiritually dead. Now you have been resurrected as a son and daughter of the Most High God. And you sit. This is why I call it the ascension dimension. Because until you sat down, which means I got, I got a chapter in the book called Sit Down. <laughs> Sit Down! <laughs> which means Jesus raised you up just to sit you down and show to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of how he's given his rule to his children. And Satan is under our feet. Jesus says, now take that devil. No, you don't understand. You are what he wants to parade in the enemy's face. This is why you cannot see yourself by your natural identity. Listen to me, and I don't mean to be insensitive. I'm just trying to get you delivered. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter who raised you. It doesn't matter that they didn't love you. It doesn't matter that they might have abandoned you. It only matters now that you have been born again. Now you got a daddy. You didn't hear what I said. Now you've got self-esteem. Now you've got something that your natural parents could have never given to you. This is why I tell people, I tell them all the time, y'all got to come out of all this racial stuff. You got to come out of it. The church, I don't know how the church is even talking about this stuff. This is so elementary, so pediatrics. I don't identify as no black man. When I preach this kind of stuff, people just have a fit in me. There. <laughs> you mean to tell me you're not proud to be of African-American heritage? I say, that ain't what I said. I said, yes, I'm proud to be born African-American. But what I'm more proud of is being born again. Oh! Because being born African-American doesn't give me victory over the enemy. Being born black doesn't come with an anointing. Being born again. We're trapped in all of this natural, carnal stuff while Satan is going unchecked. You can be proud to be Jewish, Asian, European. Love that. That's your body. But your spirit ain't Asian. 
It ain't African American. It ain't Latino. It ain't Puerto Rican. It's Jehovah. <laughs> Oh, I got the DNA of heaven in my spirit, and that's my identity. That's my identity. You got to, you got to see yourself from the spiritual dimension. And your spirit no matter how poor you were raised, no matter what you didn't have in the natural, your spirit now carries the rank of the God class. Yeah. Huh. It ought to just make you stand up taller. That you woke up this morning, the highest ranking spiritual class of being that God ever created to the degree that even angels we'll get into that in the morning angels wake up in the morning saying what may I do for you oh you gotta hear me you gotta hear me so today we not only shift in our resurrected identity, we sit in our resurrected authority. And you tell the devil, you got 30 seconds to pack up everything, every scheme, Every strategy, every weapon, everybody that you've been using against my life. Because I'm going to say one word. Oh, go! Get out! Get out! Get out! And I'm going to show it to you more in the morning. That they have to submit to you. And so from this moment forward, I have just turned you into a devil chaser. After I get through running you out of my life, I'm going to run you out of my kids. And then I'm going to run you out of my cousins. I'm coming after my mama Neil. I'm, I'm coming after my co-workers. I'm coming after my city. I'm coming after my state. And devil, you can't have this nation. Let a war cry out. We're coming. 